now let's take the opportunity to talk about where Hubu is going in terms of the direction and the vision. So Greg Mark, CEO of Hubu, let's specifically look at the product offering of Hubu and the value proposition to both the supplier and the buyer. So if I can just ask, what is it that Hubu offers today and why? And then my second question is, how will this offering develop over the next 12 months? So if we start off with the offering today and why. So we are, we are clearly uh, in, in the source to settle space within the market. And what we offer is a, a business network, which is a, which is a true business-to-business -business network. And when I say network, I, I don't mean just a document exchange network, but, but rather a network that is, is akin from a business sense as what you think of when you think of LinkedIn as a professional network or, or Facebook as a social network. We're looking to create something that is new, that is based upon the key principles of search ratings and collaboration. And we're looking to, uh, to offer the market something that allows them to be able to search, connect, collaborate with their trading partners in, in a way that is not currently offered today. You know, we focus on the main areas of spend compliance with regards to our cataloging and buying tools. We also look at AP automation as part of the overall electronic invoicing solution offering. And then, of course, all of this is sitting within a business network that is part of a collaborative all-business uh, commerce platform. So that, in a, in a nutshell, is, is, our, is our main offer. Our business is connecting companies in a collaborative sort of format. So looking at the supplier benefits and the buyer benefits for the product suite that you offer today, uh, what is it that is of real value um, from a functionality perspective and from a value perspective to both the supplier and the buyer today? Let's start with the buyer. Um, you know, our, our solutions are geared at helping the, the buyer actually achieve spin compliance. This is not just spin under management, but what we're focused on is, is compliance spin. And therefore, after they've done all the work of going through the sourcing process and creating agreements with their suppliers, oftentimes it's, it's the benefits of that are lost through a very open, uncontrolled procurement process in which free form entry and, and off-contract spin is, is taking place. And so what we help our, our buyers do is put in place solutions that will very much show, if you will, channel the buyer into a, uh, a compliant spin environment, and therefore the benefits of all of the sourcing activities are actually achieved. On the flip side of the buying, of course, is in the area of AP automation. What we do, obviously, is, is help in the general human area of converting paper invoices into electric invoices. Therefore, we, we very much facilitate that process. But we're not just trying to solve uh, a document exchange problem or what we refer to as the mailroom problem. What we realize is that the problem is not really getting invoices electronically into an AP system. The problem is getting invoices approved as quickly as possible so that early pay discounts can be realized by the organization. And, of course, so that suppliers can take part of discounts and trade financing, et cetera. It, it all keys off the approved invoice, not the invoice electronically put in an AP system, but an approved invoice put into the AP system. And so that's one of the areas that we work on in terms of a solution that we, uh, that we have called Match and Approve. We very much would like to take the approval process and put it into uh, the cloud so that basically we can help the supplier to create an invoice that they know will match the minute they hit the AP system. And so I, it's, it's a solution that we've been developing. We, you know, we've, we've developed it uh, with, with Consol Energy. And the results of that, that effort has been dramatic. When we first started working with them, they had about a 60% blocked invoice rate within their AP system. And it was costing them a significant amount of money just from an organizational process standpoint, chasing down those invoices to get them approved so the supplier could be paid. Since we've put our solution in with them and been working with them, we're around 5 or 6% now, which is significant improvement. Um, and they're reporting savings and just operational savings that are well in excess of $50 million. So it's been a significant project for them. It's been a good project for us to be working with them. And then these are the sorts of things that we want to take into uh, all buyers, organizations, to help them with. From a supplier standpoint, the reality is that suppliers want a couple of things. They want to be able to get paid faster, 
they want to sell more, and they want to have reduced operating costs. And so what we do with the AP automation tool is get them in a position to get their invoices approved. We have a solution called Invoice Status, which allows them to go online and actually see where they're, uh, what the status of the invoice is back in the back end of, uh, of our customers' AP systems. And then, of course, with the business network, we help them to be able to market themselves uh, and participate in network tendering options, et cetera. And therefore, we help uh, them promote their businesses within a, a, a global uh, network of businesses. Are you seeing the appetite for early payment discounting grow? Yeah, I am. I mean, the early pay discount or the dynamic, I mean, early pay basically takes you from, from day 1 to 10 usually, you know, and dynamic discounting comes in from day 11 to whatever your term is, be it 30, 45, 60 days, whatever, you, whatever your net X number of days is. You know, a lot of people negotiate that as part of the overall contract with, with their suppliers. And so, yeah, I, I'm very much just seeing it. I, this has been around for a long time. It has been something that, that people have been trying to achieve. But the problem, and, and really the only time that you've seen it really successful has been in the area of services. And the reason why it's been in services is because timesheets are easy to approve. And once the timesheet is approved, then the invoice is basically approved. And therefore, you know, it's, it comes down to the whole process of how soon is that invoice approved in the system. Because nobody is going to pay early on an unimproved invoice because it's just, it's just a risk. And then therefore what you find is, is that the key to the early pay discount and the dynamic discounting engine is the invoice being approved in the system. And that's why, that's what we're focusing on because we believe that if we can focus on that and if we can really significantly improve that process, and that's why we believe it has to be a collaborative cloud-based process, we can make a significant impact in, in the commercial lives of both buyers and sellers and that's where we see you know, our opportunity. We don't think that charging buyers or suppliers for document exchange is a very sensible model. Because the reason is, you know, I used to say that you know, in, in document exchange, this goes back 10, 20 years ago. We used to talk about this in terms of saying our competitor was the fax machine. Okay? You know, we had EDI on one side, we had the fax machine on the other side, and in the middle we were trying to put an XML over the internet document exchange platform. That's kind of the, where this thing has evolved from. Now the reality is, is that our competition is email. You know, a PDF attachment to an email is a competitive document exchange platform. It's not what we want because it, you know, it converts eventually ones and zeros to you know to paper, and we don't we don't want to see that happen. But that is definitely uh, you know a competitive side to where we are. Where we see you can make where you can really make money in this business is by adding value. And therefore, we are constantly looking at what we can do with our platform. You know, that's why we, you know, we add features like, you know, like Pay Me Now, which is a very, very simple feature that simply allows the supplier, since he's able to see that his invoice is approved and that there is a date by which it's going to be paid, why can't he just click a button and ask for, you know, make a bid for, for an early pay? You know, I'll give you a discount of X if you will pay me by this date. I mean, that's, that's a simple conversation. Why not facilitate that over the business network, as well as putting in very complex, you know, we're working on a relationship right now to partner with what we believe to be the top dynamic discounting company in the market. And so we will put something more sophisticated out there, but there's simple solutions that work as well. Vendor Master Sync is a great example of a way to use a collaborative network. Everyone's got in their ERPs vendor files. And it's always been a problem. Vendor data has been, you know, has been problematic in most organizations to keep accurate and, and to keep up to date. Why should every company have to try to keep the same data for the vendors, which are many of the similar vendors themselves? Why not just publish that up to the business network and let the vendors themselves update their data and then syndicate it across all of their customers? That's what we do with Vendor Master Sync. We have the same thing with Item Master Sync. We have a catalog authoring tool, and that goes into our search shopping basket tool. But what if you don't want to use our search shopping basket tool? What if you just want these catalog items to go back into your MM system, for instance, if you're an SAP shop, or into your procurement, uh, Oracle procurement offering, etc. 
That's what we do with, that, with Ida Master Sync. We'll take the catalog items and we'll put it into your master data behind your firewall. We're doing HTML5-based skins on top of MM and SRM because we want to improve the usability of those tools. We have this invoice status capability that we talked about earlier where a supplier can log on at any time. Usually it's at the end of the day because he's working all day long. He doesn't have time to be calling the AP department of all of its customers asking about what the status of their invoice is because he's working. So why not go home sitting in Starbucks on your iPad and see what the status of your invoices are and actually do some cash management you know, on the business network. Match and Approve is this tool that we have, which is the buyer's ability to collaborate with suppliers around pre-matching of invoices before they actually go into the AP system. We have a spot buying tool that's on the network. We've got a catalog, and we've got a catalog buying tool. We have service entry sheets. We've got complex service entry you know, capabilities, which is interesting, is where people can submit invoices that have both goods and services on the same invoice. And what we do is we split the goods from the services. We put the bids through the regular receiving process. The services, we create service entry sheets that we can push that into the SAP system so that we can handle that. So we're developing a wide set of tools, and we're going to do more and more collaborative tools in the business network that hopefully is going to create significant value along the way for both buyers and suppliers. And we think the best way to be able to make a business out of this is not to charge for the delivery of the mail, but rather charge for value-adding solutions that sit on top of this commerce platform and drive value into the buyer-supplier relationship. So, Greg, you, this is a nice segue into um, the kind of the second question, which was referred to earlier. You've given us a bit of an idea as to some of the really value-adding functionality that sits within the network. Can you tell us a little bit more about what the market might be able to expect from the platform in, say, the next 12 months as far as exciting product developments are concerned? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we are, we are working very closely with Dun & Bradstreet. We've announced that we have, uh, we have increased the network, the business network, to over a million businesses through this relationship that we have with Dun & Bradstreet. And therefore, we see very much of the business network as the go-to place for the sourcing of supply for buying organizations. We've just added the capability for our suppliers to be able to post their certificates so that all the sort of documents that you would expect uh, a buyer to be able to request and see is all going to be there for them to pick up. And then what we're also going to be doing is very quickly over the next 6 to 12 months is furthering the relationship with Dun & Bradstreet where we can offer risk ratings within the system. Right now we have the ability for companies to rate their suppliers. So we, we have this endorse or this, you know, like, like in Facebook where you have the light we have a similar sort of capability within the business network for companies to be able to rate their suppliers, but there's also financial risk information that needs to be done. And so what we're doing with Dun & Bradstreet is, is creating the opportunity where you can subscribe to a company's financial ratings either as a, you know, as a company, it's like playing a song over iTunes, or if you want to have a portfolio of companies, you can buy the access to the Dun & Bradstreet data in that sort of format. We, we see that when someone does a sourcing event and creates a list of potential bidders to that sourcing event, that they can, they can pay a little bit extra and take a look at what the financial ratings are through Dun & Bradstreet of those companies that they're looking at doing. So that's an area that we're looking at driving. And we're going to be we're going to be trying to create a very much so uh, an environment in which, you know, we're not just talking, you know, well, what's your value to the buyer and what's your value to the supplier? Unfortunately, that still exists right now where companies like ours, you know, look to the buyer as the major source of its revenue. And I do believe that that's because most of the value that we are creating in our solution is benefited to the buyer or the supplier. We want very much so to balance the equation in terms of value proposition to both parties. And then what we expect is there's no longer going to be, you're going to be a buyer or a supplier. You're going to be a business, and you're going to be on the business network, and you're going to be buying, and you're going to be selling, and you're going to be doing all the sort of commerce amongst yourselves in a way that is, that is there. We are, you know, obviously we're talking about the financial derivatives such as dynamic discounting, et cetera, to be coming very, very quickly. And then, of course, the, the, the holy grail, I think, of the business network are the informational derivatives that are, that are possible through uh, having access to 
to significant sample size of the global economy. That's not going to happen overnight, obviously. I think it's going to evolve in a combination of regional and vertical sort of offerings. We have a customer right now, which is a large French hospital network. And you know we're already seeing that it's very potential within the next couple of years for us to be able to provide the market a significant view of the real-time status of the French healthcare industry as a result of that which is taking place over the business network. And what we want to do is we want to extend that to other regions, into other industries, to eventually be able to say that the business network can provide you a real-time pulse of the global economy. That's the ultimate goal. Exciting stuff ahead. Thank you very much, Greg.